welcome everyone uh, to our VT University live session. We're going to learn all about macros today from Owen Renner, VP of Engineering. Hey, Owen. Hi, guys. So as always, um, let me just uh, take you through a little bit of webinar housekeeping. We're going to uh, spend about an hour today together. There is a question facility um, over in your GoToWebinar control panel. Pop your questions there, and we have a Q, we have several Q and A sessions actually today throughout the session. So do pop in your questions, and we'll get to them throughout. Um, there is a survey at the end, so please complete that survey. I'd really appreciate it. Um, it lets us know what else you would like us to cover in future webinars, um, and also how you found this one. And as always, there will be a recording uh, a few days after this webinar. I'm hoping to actually get it out to everybody tomorrow. Um, if not tomorrow, then it will be at the latest Monday or Tuesday. Okay, as I said, it's lovely to meet you all. For those of you who I haven't met yet um, via our webinars, my name is Evelyn Wolf, and I'm the CMO here at Visible Thread. If you ever have questions for me directly, do feel free to reach out, evelyn.wolf at visiblethread.com. And joining us today, as I said, is Owen, our VP of Engineering, who is going to talk to us about macros. Okay, now, this is the agenda, and I'm just going to actually hand over the presenter rights to Owen. Thank you, Evelyn. There you go. Let so, me know how that works for you. Going to share my screen, just bear with me one minute. Okay, uh, thank you, Evelyn, and hello, everybody. Um, it's great to be here uh, to have the opportunity to talk about uh, macros. So, this is a presentation I had originally an intended delivering as part of our users' conference in person uh, back in March, uh, but due to circumstances beyond everybody's control. Uh, we're doing it in this format, but it's fantastic to have the opportunity. So what we're going to talk about today is macros and how we use them in, in VT Docs. And as Evelyn's mentioned, there'll be several pauses throughout the presentation where people can uh, put their questions in, in the chat window. Oh, and so, sorry, apologies. Just before you kick off, I'm just actually going to let people know um, I'm going to turn off my camera and I think you're going to turn off yours as well. Just thank you to for reminding save, me. Yeah, just to save some some bandwidth in case we get internet issues, guys. So we're, we're just going to turn this off and back over to you, Owen. Thanks, Evelyn. Okay, so I'm working. Um, so what are Excel macros? So I've lifted this quote directly from uh, the Microsoft site. So macros in Excel, uh, if you have tasks in Microsoft Excel that you do repeatedly, you can create a macro to automate those tasks. A macro is an action or a set of actions that you can run as many times as you want. So what we're talking about here is the ability in Visible Thread to automate certain uh, tasks in outputs that Visible Thread generates. So if you've attended any of our previous webinars or if you've used Visible Thread docs, You'll be familiar with um, outputs such as the compliance matrix output or the ability to generate Excel sheets from the concept tab or from the discovery tab. So what we're going to talk about today is the ability to customize these outputs using Excel macros. So macros are effectively a simple series of instructions that you will run to complete a particular desired output. So macros execute uh, instructions step by step uh, they can use data contained in your workbook to perform a set of actions. The idea behind automations using macros is they, they really are intended to save you time on uh, performing a set of instructions that you normally would do manually. So if you have a set of customization tasks or jobs that you would normally perform on every compliance matrix that you generate using Visible Thread Docs or every uh, concept export, you can attempt to automate these using macros. So any of those manual step-by-step -step tasks that you do in every output that they may only take you a minute or two, but because you have to do them every time, uh, they can be error prone. It, it's possible to automate these using macros. So why would you use macros uh, with Visible Thread? So macros with visible thread, as I said, allow specific repetitive tasks 
to be automated in your compliance matrix output or indeed any Excel export from Visible Thread Docs. Today, specifically, I'm going to be talking about customizing compliance matrix outputs, but the same process applies to both Excel exports from the concept tracking tab and also from the discovery tab in Visible Thread Docs. Some examples of some of the tasks you might want to automate uh, using macros might be uh, adding columns to a compliance matrix, uh, adding color formatting to cells or rows, uh, maybe modifying some of the text, adding new sheets to the compliance matrix, maybe with a specific layout, uh, maybe you want to add a summary sheet to the front of your compliance matrix. You may want to do more complex tasks such as pull specific text from cells or join uh, text together um, in specific cells or specific parts of the, the compliance matrix. Used well and used correctly, macros can be an excellent way of standardizing how you utilize the visible thread compliance matrix across your proposal teams. So when we've worked with customers uh, in the past to, to help them create these macros, what we found is in many organizations, there might be uh, one person who generates a compliance matrix and has a specific set of tasks they perform on that output. They might hide specific columns, they might apply specific formatting. Uh, it may only take three or four minutes for each compliance matrix, but they might be generating five, 10, 15, 20 of these a month. And they may have a team of another five, 10, 15, 20 people throughout their proposal team who need to do the same thing. So rather than asking every one of those proposal managers to do the same set of laborious formatting tasks, codifying this uh, and standardizing it in an automation using macros really allows you to make that more or less error prone. It allows you to scale that process and it allows you to onboard people to your team um, much easier so that they, not, they don't need to know the specific formatting rules. They can simply generate their output from visible thread and apply those customized automations using macros. So that's really what we're aiming for here with this feature. So it's important to, when we go through this presentation, to bear in mind that some tasks are, are good candidates for automation with macros and some tasks are not good candidates. So what, what would be examples of good candidates? So tasks that can be described using a very simple set of repeatable steps that will work for all kinds of documents that you're going to work on in Visible Thread. So um, if, you, if, a, if there's a set of customizations or formatting that you will apply to every compliance matrix you generate, no matter what the RFP, that's a good candidate to look at for automation. Um, <clears throat> tasks that do not require any additional data other than the information that's in the compliance matrix, that's also a good candidate for, for automation. What's probably more important to think about is what are the tasks that might be bad candidates uh, for automation for, with, using macros? So if you have some tasks that you perform on your compliance matrix that require a uh, specific domain knowledge uh, or knowledge that can't be codified in a simple set of rules. Uh, if you take, for example, <clears throat> if you wish to highlight the, the first paragraph in section M of the compliance matrix out output, well, is it possible to write down a set of simple repeatable steps that allows somebody to identify the first paragraph in section M? Uh, bearing in mind that, that that section may not be titled the same way in every RFP, uh, it may not be formatted the same way, the structure of the RFP might be different, so the output will be different. So these are things to bear in mind. Is it very easy to identify or to describe to somebody how to identify that section? Uh, it's also bearing in mind that it's not a good idea to, to automate tasks that only apply to very specific kinds of compliance matrices or exports, because these are things that may not be repeatable for other exports. Um, let's take an example where you may have applied a formatting to remove certain information from your, from your compliance matrix, but it only applied to a specific RFP from a particular, a particular issuing uh, party. But a colleague decided to run that automation or, or macro on a compliance matrix that they generated uh, from a different RFP. So they may not know that they've now removed content uh, that may be relevant and, and they may be completely unaware of that as a result of running that automation. So that's another thing to bear in mind to make sure that these tasks that you're automating, uh, that you're codifying macros, to make sure that they're going to apply to as many of these uh, 
RFPs or to many of these documents as possible. A good tip here is to think about um, asking a stranger, for example, take a school kid, uh, and trying to try to describe to them the task that you're trying to, to complete using this automation. Can they manually complete this task using the set of steps that you write out? So if you're looking at how to format or how to customize a compliance matrix output, write the steps out in a piece of paper. Will that person who has no domain knowledge of the industry you work in, who has no prior knowledge to the processes you work in, will they be able to complete that set of tasks? And if they can, well, that's possibly something that was, that's possible to automate using macros. Ultimately though, used well, as I said, macros will save you time. Um, they will also save errors and help you scale your team and repeat certain processes uh, across a, a wider, um, wider proposal team. So how do we actually use macros then within Visible Thread? Well, each Visible Thread sandbox has what we call an Excel macro template. This template contains a set of preloaded macros. So it's effectively an Excel file that we've preloaded macros into. And this file or these macros from this file can be included in any compliance matrix output or any Excel output generated from visible thread docs. So let's see an example. So I'm gonna switch over to my visible thread instance. And this is something that's gonna happen throughout this presentation. I meant to mention this at the start. So the presentation will, com will consist of both PowerPoint slides as well as actual practical demonstrations. So you'll have to forgive me as I switch back and forth between PowerPoint and my visible thread uh, application. So I'm gonna go in here now into visible thread docs. Uh, excuse me, I just need to pause screen sharing for a minute. So I'm back into visible thread docs. So now I'm going to, I've selected a particular RFP here. I'm going to go to my uh, create compliance matrix button here. And there's a couple important steps here when, you, when you're generating compliance matrix and you want to work with uh, customization macros. So you'll see there's a checkbox down here and it says include macros to customize output. So when I have this checked, it's going to include any macros that I've preloaded to my visible thread environment in my uh, compliance matrix output. Now, I already have a bunch of macros loaded in my environment. We'll talk in a few minutes about how you can change those, but I'm gonna go ahead and click generate matrix. So this should take a few seconds and it's gonna open up in Excel as it normally would. So there's a couple of things now that this is open in Excel that I'm going to point out. So first of all, you'll see here when I'm highlighting with the mouse that we have this button uh, that tells me I need to enable editing. So because I've downloaded effectively this, this Excel file from a, a web application, it tells me I need, I need to enable editing on it because it, it's just a standard Microsoft warning. So I'm gonna click enable editing. Second of all, I now have a security warning saying that macros have been disabled. So standard Microsoft Excel configuration disables macros in every file that you open. You need to actually tell it that you want to enable those macros in your Excel files. So I'm going to click this button to enable content. Now finally, the file is completed opening. So this is a standard compliance matrix that you've probably seen many times before. This compliance matrix now contains a button over here called visible thread macros, because when I was generating the matrix, I chose to include macros in this uh, compliance matrix. So if I click on this button, what it'll present to me here is a visible thread menu showing all the visible thread macros that are now loaded into this compliance matrix. So these are available for me to run, and these will all perform some sort of automation to customize the, the output of this compliance matrix. So this is what we call invisible thread, the, the visible thread bootstrap menu. So effectively, this is a menu that we are building by inspecting the macros that are inside our, our Excel file and building a menu for you, allowing you to choose which macros to run. So I'm going to choose one of these macros. So I'm going to, for example, choose one of our sample macros here. 
And this macro will find and extract uh, all of the dates that are found in this particular shred here. So we're going to click Run Macro, and it's telling me it's completed. And I'm going to close this dialog. And you can see what it's done is it's highlighted any dates that are found and it's added them to a specific column over here too. So this is a simple macro that we have created and it's preloaded into everybody's visible thread environment so everybody can, can experiment and play with it. Okay, I'm gonna switch back to my PowerPoint. So we've already seen uh, how to do this. So as you will see, as I go through the presentation, a lot of the information that I'm going through and I'm demonstrating the application is also contained in the deck. Uh, so that's there for you to take away after the presentation, but I'm not gonna read through items that I've, I would have gone through in the demonstration. So I'm gonna quickly slide through here. So these are the warnings that we were talking about when we opened the file. And we're gonna pause here for a moment to see if we've any questions so far about what we've covered up to now. Okay, everyone, over in the question panel in GoToWebinar, um, pop in your, your first questions about macros and getting those set up. Okay, here we go. Can I have multiple macro templates is the first question that we got in on. That's a great question. Um, thanks for that. Um, the answer is no. Um, so the macro template is stored in your sandbox. So you'll have one template per sand sandbox in Visible Thread Docs. So you can't have multiple macro templates, but you can have any number of macros in that template. So you can have 5, 10, 15, 20, whatever it is inside in that template that are available for people to run. So while you can't have different templates at the moment, you can have any number of different macros inside the one template. Okay. Okay, I think that's it on the first on the first section, Owen. Seems to okay. everything be very clear. Guys, as we continue on, whenever you have questions, just pop them over in the control panel and we'll get to them. Okay. So we've covered briefly why you would use macros and how you would run a macro in a compliance matrix that you've generated from Visible Thread. So let's now talk a little bit about how you go about creating your own macro. So there are two ways to create macros to utilize to, to use invisible thread. There's what I call the easy way over here on the left hand side, and then there's the not so easy way on the right hand side. Let's talk about the easy way first, and we're going to spend a lot of time going through examples of how you could uh, create macros using the easy way, and we'll talk a little bit later about creating macros the not so easy way. So the easy way. The easy way to, to create a macro is to actually use Microsoft Excel to record your set of steps that you're doing to customize and modify your compliance matrix. So Excel has a really neat feature that effectively allows you to record a set of steps or actions in an Excel workbook. What it actually does behind the scene is, scenes, it generates macro code that corresponds to those actions. So macros in, in Excel are written using a programming language called Visual, excuse me, Visual Basic for Applications. So it's a Microsoft programming language that you utilize to write automations and macros to run in any of the Office tools, the Microsoft Office tools. So when you use the recording feature in Excel, it actually automatically generates that code for you and puts it in with your Excel file. The not so easy way is to actually go in and get your hands dirty and write the Visual Basic code yourself. So there's a, quite an extensive Visual Basic uh, set of libraries and capabilities that allow you to interact and modify data in the Excel worksheet to allow you to do quite a, quite a lot of fantastic things in Excel. The downside with this approach is that it does require some software development skills. So it is definitely more flexible uh, more extensible. Uh, um, however, it does require a, a, lot, a lot of software development skills and it's more tricky. Both of these techniques have one thing in common. So the first thing you need to do when you're going to work with creating macros is you need to ensure that you have the Excel developer tab enabled in your Microsoft Excel installation. So again, I'm gonna switch over to Microsoft Excel and I'm going to show you how you go do that. So the standard Excel installation does not have the Excel developer tab switched on. 
So to make sure that you do have it in your Excel, so you need to go down to File, and you go to Options down here in the bottom left. Then when your Options pane loads, you need to click on Customize Ribbon. And then finally, over here in the right-hand side, you'll see here <clears throat> there is a Developer option. It's checked in my instance because I would have been working with macros before, but it may not be, be enabled in your instance. So make sure you have that enabled before you go to work with macros. So once you've checked that box, you can click OK. And now you'll see, you should see that you have a developer tab here available for you in your Excel instance. OK, back to our PowerPoint. Okay, so let's take a start in recording our, our first macro. So let's imagine that we wish to hide the first two columns and change the theme, the colors of the theme that we use in every compliance matrix we generate. So let's imagine that we're working uh, in a proposal management team. Uh, we really like using visible thread. We really like the compliance matrix and the time it saves for us. However, the first two columns that are generated by the, in the compliance matrix, we never use and they just get in the way. So we often find ourselves hiding those two columns and maybe changing some of the formatting and the colors to match our, our corporate theme. So we wanna automate those tasks to save us time. Again, if this is something that we're doing five times, 10 times a week, automating that, that, those simple tasks that may only take a few minutes will add up and save us a lot of time. So again, there's slides here to talk through how we do this step by step, but I'm going to go jump into my visible thread instance here and actually demonstrate it for you. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go and generate a compliance matrix. So the first step to customizing and creating your own macro is to actually generate the base compliance matrix that you want to customize. So I've selected an RFP here. Uh, I'm in my quality analysis tab, and I'm going to create a compliance matrix. Make sure I have uh, the option to include macros. And like we saw before, this will open in a few seconds time. Okay. So I'm going to enable editing here once more and enable content to enable my macros. Okay, I'm just going to expand my Excel screen so everybody can see it. So now I'm going to start off by going to the developer tab. And you'll see under the developer tab, we have this option here called record macro. So I'm gonna click here. So now Excel is asking me to give my macro a name. So the name here is very important because if you recall when I was demonstrating how to use macros in Visible Thread, that Visible Thread displays a menu of macros to run once you open the Excel file. Well, the name that you specify here will correspond to how your macro is listed in that menu. So let's call this, for example, workshop column customization, because that's how I remember it. We want to store it in this workbook and we're gonna click OK. So now you'll notice, <clears throat> excuse me, that Excel has switched the button here to say stop recording. So whenever I have finished making my customizations, I'll click on stop recording. But from now, I'm gonna start making my changes to this output. So I'm going to hide column A and column B because for the people who use the compliance matrix in my team, they never look at these two columns and they're just getting in the way of actually looking at the content. But before I do that, I'm going to move this content here over the column C, so I don't lose it. So let me do that just by dragging like so. I'm now going to hide these two columns. Okay, fantastic. Now I'm going to change the format here of the heading here to match my corporate branding. So I don't like this particular green because my company's branding is all blue. So I'm going to go here and change the formatting here to be this nice blue here. And lastly, 
uh, this column here that says your comments here, I'm gonna make this quite specific. So I'm going to imagine that I'm working for a company called Acmecom. So I'm going to put in here, Acmecom, find yes or no. So again, to people who are utilizing the spreadsheet, I might be sending the spreadsheet out for people to, to populate. It's quite clear what I want to fill in in this particular column here. So I'm quite happy now with my changes. Uh, I'm gonna make one more change to this output. Uh, I'm going to rename this starter compliance matrix tab down here. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna call it um, the RFP shred. Okay, so I'm going to save this. And there's one very important step I need to do before I'm finished. I need to go back to the developer tab and I'm going to stop recording. Okay, so that's my macro created. So what Excel has done in the background, it's translated all those actions into actual code and put them in a macro file. And we'll see in a few minutes time where all that is stored in Excel. Okay, back to our PowerPoint. So I'm gonna shoot on true to, we've gone through this in a demonstration. We have our macro. Okay, so now we need to talk about, we have our, our how to add our macro to the visible thread sandbox, to the template in the visible thread sandbox. So we've now created our macro for customizing our compliance matrix. It's on our, our Excel file that's stored locally on our machine. Now we need to look at how do we get that macro into the sandbox or into the templates that's located in our visible thread doc sandbox. So just to recap, the visible thread sandbox has a macro enabled Excel file preloaded. The Excel file is effectively a template that contains macros that will be included in every compliance matrix that is generated. So to use our new macro that we have just created, that we've just recorded, we effectively need to take our macro and get it and add it into that macro template that's stored in the sandbox, in the visible thread doc sandbox. So there's a couple of different steps in this um, and there's a lot of detail in the slides to follow. And again, I won't be going through each slide uh, in slide by slide. Instead, I'll be demonstrating it uh, in the tool. But as I said earlier, you can get the slide deck as a takeaway, uh, as a reference to, to allow you to follow it step by step afterwards. But to just summarize the steps here, the first thing we will do is we will download the macro template from our visible thread doc sandbox. We're then going to store it on our PC somewhere that's easily to find. So I have listed here in our desktop and we will then open this file in Excel. We will then take the workbook that contains the macro we've customized and we will open it. In our case, it's already open it. It's already open. Then we're going to copy the VBA module containing the macro that we've create, just, just created. And we're going to copy that to the macro template file that we downloaded from VT Docs. And then we're going to save the macro template file and re-upload it to VT Docs to store those changes. So that's a high level description of the steps we're about to, to follow here. And I'll go through them now in detail. So let's jump in back into our tool so we can actually do it practically. So the first thing I'm actually going to do is I'm going to save this file in an easy location that's easy for me to remember. So I'm going to put it in our desktop here and I'm going to call it VT column settings. Okay, so now I'm going to go to visible thread and I'm going to download the macro template file that is stored in my visible thread sandbox so we can start making changes to it. So if I go to the settings area here in visible thread docs, you will see I have a, an option here or a section here called Excel output customization options. So when I click on the edit button here, it gives me some options. So the first option here allows me to download the workbook. So this allows me to download the Excel template file down to my PC. The next option will allow me to upload that once I've changed it and store it back in the settings area. So for now, I'm just going to click 
download workbook. So it's going to take a second to open this in Excel. Okay, so I'm going to enable editing again. So now I have two Excel files open. So I'm just going to try and open them side by side to make this easier for people to see. So if you just bear with me one second. So on the left, we have the customized compliance matrix that has the macro I just recorded. It's, I've called it VT column settings. And over on the right hand side here, we will have the Excel template that I just downloaded from Visible Thread Docs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the developer tab because effectively what I want to do is copy the macro that I've just saved from the, in the Excel file on the left over to the Excel file on the right. So to do this, we open, we click on Visual Basic here in the developer tab. And what this does, it opens the Microsoft Excel Visual Basic editor window. Now, there's a lot going on here. And we're not going to go into any of this in detail for now, so don't worry. But what we are going to, I'm going to highlight specific areas that are relevant for you. So over here in the left, there is going to be a section representing every Excel file that we have open. So the ones that we're con concerned with at the moment is the VT column settings, which is the, the uh, Excel file we just recorded our macro in. And the, the, the file underneath it is the VT template file that we just downloaded from Visible Thread Docs. So if I expand out or look at some of the options that are contained here, so the one that's really relevant for us is called modules. So Excel macros are written in a language called VBA, Visual Basic for Applications. And Excel stores that macro code in what it calls modules. So if I expand the modules area here, you'll see that there's a bunch of modules already listed here. And all of the modules that are listed as VT underscore something are all modules that we would have created as part of our standard template that's preloaded into every Visible Thread doc sandbox. When you record a new macro using the Excel recording feature, it creates a module for you behind the scenes. And it typically calls that module module one. If there's already a module one, it may call that module two and so on. So if I click on module one here, which is contained in my, my column settings file that I, that I customized and double click on it, it will actually show me the code for that macro. And you can see over on the right hand side, there is an actual macro or a sub procedure that is what it's called in VBA. And it's called workshop column customization. So this is the name that I gave to the macro a few minutes ago when we were recording that macro. So Excel has actually generated this code for us as a result of recording it. And if you're really interested, you can go look through the kind of code that's generated. So what I need to do, so I've confirmed now that this module is the correct module. It has my code, it has the correct name for the macro. I need to get this module down to the modules area here from my template Excel file because this is the file that I've downloaded from my sandbox, and this is the file that I'm going to re-upload with my new macro. So to do this, I'm going to select my module one, and I'm gonna drag it down here to my template file. And you'll see it's created a copy of it down here called module one. Okay, so that's the first step complete. The second step we need to do here is we need to rename this. So if you recall when we demonstrated how to use a macro and how to run a macro in the compliance matrix at the start, you remember that there was a visible thread menu showing the list of macros that are available, available to run in the compliance matrix. So there's a visible thread bootstrap macro that effectively builds that men menu for you. And it does so by looking at all the modules that begin with the letters VT underscore. So it'll go through every module that begins with the letters VT underscore and look for subroutines that, be, that are contained in those modules. So if I wish to have my workshop column customization macro appear in that menu, I need to rename this module. So I'm going to do that right now. 
we're going to call this vt underscore and it has to be vt underscore something i'm going to call it vt underscore column customization okay so now i'm pretty much done i have my template uh, it has my module copied over and I've renamed it. So there are the steps that I need to follow. So I'm going to save. I'm going to come out of my VBA editor mode. I'm going to make sure I've saved my template. So this is this is the template that we've just modified and we're going to re-upload to Visible Thread Docs. So I'm going to save it in an easy location to find. I'm going to save it in my desktop. I'm going to call it VT template here. Okay. I'm going to close down my Excel files. And I'm going to upload that modified template file back to visible thread. So I go to look for it where I saved it. Okay, and I'm going to upload it. And that's been uploaded and that's now stored with my visible thread docs uh, settings. Okay, so that basically is how you would take a macro that you've recorded, copy it into the visible thread template that you've downloaded from your visible thread doc sandbox, rename it so that it's going to appear in the visible thread macro menu and then upload that template back into visible thread docs so let's go back to our powerpoint again i'm going to jump through all these slides because i've stepped through all of these steps and uh, but they're here for your reference later on so i'm going to pause for a moment in a few minutes we're going to demonstrate that macro that we just recorded and test it out but for let's just pause for a minute to see if we've any questions we do indeed um oh and it's it's great to have gone through all of this and it's fantastic to have the amount of slides as a um as a backup for, for people afterwards so we'll be sharing those as well guys um the first question here if we don't have an excel re resource can visible thread do them for us Aha, that's a great question. And I was going to reference this at the end. So uh, the first point of contact will be our customer success team. So yes, we do help people with this. Um, um, not everybody has Excel resources. Um, so our customer success team do engage and have engaged in the past with customers to help uh, with Excel customizations. And they're very well versed in identifying what are good candidates for customization and for automation and how to go about doing that. Great. So we do a bit of training then as well for people trying to wrap their head around macros and what they can do. Yes, absolutely. Um, it's it's we do realize that this is not a a a topic that's uh, that's easy to grasp for everybody. Uh, as I said, it's quite powerful. Um, but we do we are there to train people and to help people so that to help them get the, the most use out of it. Um, here's a question that I can really relate to. Um, if I make a mistake in my recording, can I easily edit or do I have to start over? Yeah, that's a very good question, actually. Um, the the only way to really edit it is to go into the code uh, and modify the code. So then you're looking at understanding how the code works. Um, I, there'll be there'll be a link to, to a good uh, resource for how to get familiar with the Visual Basic code uh, at, at the end of the presentation. Um, but some of the code is quite straightforward and um, to get to get your head around and some of, some of it can be quite complicated depending on what you're looking to do. Unfortunately, there is no way to, uh, from a recording perspective, kind of jump in in the middle of a recording and, and go through it again. Uh, you really have to, to start again, uh, unfortunately, other than modify the code, as I said. Fair enough. And when creating and naming the macro, does it need to be in a one word, no space format? Yes, that's a very good question. Uh, yes, there are naming conventions and uh, naming um, restrictions. Um, so when you go to the recording, uh, so let me jump into, uh, I've closed down Excel, um, but let me 
start it off again start it up again when you go to record the macro and give it a name excel will will prompt you uh, and let you know uh, if you're using an invalid name so if i go to record a macro here and um my new macro for example um excel is going to complain at me because i'm not following the, the correct excel uh, naming rules so excel has inbuilt um guidelines as to what the name should contain okay um i think one more before we go on oh this is this is another one close to my heart if you're working on mac will macros work yes great question and yes the answer is yes um so Denai, uh, one of our customer success representatives who's done a lot of work with macros, uh, her, her platform of choice is a Mac. Um, so macros will certainly work on Macs. Um, the, I've only come across one instance where there was a very custom uh, macro built for somebody that required use of lots of external libraries that didn't work so well in a Mac. But to be honest, um, that's, that's a very specific case. But all the macros that you're seeing, that you'll see in this demonstration and all the ones that we load in as part of the standard uh, sandbox will all work on, on Mac. Fantastic. Great. We'll continue on into, into the next section. Thanks, Owen. Okay, no problem. Okay, so this is where we're going to test our macro, and this is where you're going to find out if I've actually did it right or not. <laughs> so let's 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 cross our fingers. Um, so to test out your macro, and again, I'm not going to go through these slides. I'm going to go jump jump straight back into my visible thread docs, and I'm going to go to my folders, and I'm going to take my RFP. Uh, let let's take a different RFP. Uh, because this is the one that we customize when we're recording the macro. So let's let's generate off a different RFP. I'm going to go to my quality analysis tab and generate a compliance matrix. So it's just going to take a second. This might be a big document. Um, I'm going to shred this document, include my macros. It should take a second for it to open. So we're going to get our usual warnings when this opens. We hit enable editing, uh, enable content, and we click on visible thread macros. And you'll see there's a macro down the bottom now called workshop column customization. And you can see why I named it that because it's easy for me to remember. Um, so now I'm going to run this macro and bear in mind, this is a different RFP we've now generated a compliance matrix for. So I should see the same formatting applied here. So when I run this macro, uh, there we go. It's just completed. It says workshop column customization completed. And I click OK. So um, we'll, we'll let me close this for a second and we'll see what it's done. It's hided column A and B. It's applied that formatting that we asked for. Uh, it's renamed the, the the title of the sheet. So again, none of these are really complex tasks, but however, if there are repeatable tasks that you have to perform every single time you do this, it gets error prone, cumbersome, uh, and quite simply a pain to describe to other people to do. So this is a way of standardizing or codifying those steps so that you can roll it out for anybody to do. Um, just related to that question that we had previously about the naming convention, um, just something crossed my mind here. So as you can see, we have to follow uh, naming rules, so no spaces and so on. However, you can add a description into your macros, and I'll show you in a, in a, in a minute how you do that. So because these can be quite difficult for people to understand what they are. So as you can see in this top one here, we do have a description listed beside the macro. So if you just bear with me one second, um, I wasn't going to go into this, but I will since the question was asked. Um, if I go to the developer tab here and click on Visual Basic, and if I actually load the module for that particular, um, here we go, yeah, that particular macro, you'll see after the macro, there is a, what's called a comment in VBA. So a comment is basically a, a place in the code that allows you to add a bit of description, a bit of description text that isn't actually code that ex executed. So the visible thread bootstrap macro that generates that menu 
uses a, a convention that if it finds a comment directly after the name of the macro, so in the next line there's a comment, it will assume that that is the description of the macro. So you'll see it's found that here, and it brings that in and displays that. Um, if I run this again, it displays that as a description for that macro. So that's one thing that you can utilize when you're when you're um, creating your macros to help describe what the macro does to other people that need to run them. Okay. Okay, uh, jumping back to, to my PowerPoint. So we've tested our macro, we verified it works. Um, what are we gonna talk about next? Okay, so that's how we can record a macro using the Excel recording feature. So let's talk a little bit about, I know we have a few minutes left, so let's introduce why you might want to go past the recording feature and actually use Visual Basic to, to write your macro. And I'm not gonna go into too much detail here, but I just want to introduce it for you to, to give you a little bit of food for thought. So using Excel to record macros is pretty quick and it's an easy way to automate tasks. It does, however, have limitations. If the macro needs to use some form of logic to decide on what actions to take, it's difficult or if not, not impossible to put them in, there in a recording. If the macro needs to manipulate sheets in the workbook, recorded macros tend to access sheets based on the name of the sheet. And sometimes when you're generating exports from Visible Thread, the sheet names may be different depending on if it's a single RFP, if it's a multi-doc shred, if you're generating from concept tracking and so on. So you can run into issues that way. Uh, using VBA to code your macro, you can access sheets using a variety of different ways. It doesn't have to be based on name. So it allows you to work around that problem. If the macro needs to copy content from particular rows or a variable number of rows, depending on the content, again, that's very difficult to automate in, in a recording. Whereas if you're writing code, you can inspect the content that you're, that's in the, the, the compliance matrix and using the content to determine what number of rows you need to copy depending on some kind of value in that content. For example, you may decide that you want to con copy content that has hits for a particular dictionary term. So you can do that using code, um, whereas that's quite difficult to automate using a recording. So in summary, writing VBA code to create macros is more flexible and powerful, but it does require software development skills. And that's where you might engage with our customer success team and they can talk about what's required to actually to build it. So just a little bit of a, uh, uh, an intro to working with, with VBA code. So when you open your compliance matrix output, um, and we've seen this already, you click on the developer tab. In the developer tab, uh, you go click on, Vis on Visual Basic. So let me jump back into Excel, for example. So you click on Visual Basic. As a reminder, it opens up the Visual Basic Editor. In here, you'll have your modules. So if you right-click on modules, you can go to insert a new class module, um, and you can start writing your code, um, uh, uh, as much code as you want. It's a useful guide to actually start perhaps with a recording and then start customizing the code that it generates. So that kind of gets you maybe 20 or 30% of the way, and then allows you to kind of uh, to work on that. That's a useful way to start working with this. You can also look at some of the example macros that we have loaded into the template. So we have an example macro called um, extract content, which is this one here. And this is a pretty good macro to look at as an example because it actually displays a dialogue and it gets user input. So if I jump back to my uh, compliance matrix here and run that macro and I look at the extract content, it actually prompts the user to choose. So what this macro does is it, it'll highlight and extract any content that's contained in a set of parentheses. And you can choose what constitutes a parenthesis for this document. It could be square brackets, uh, um, curly brackets, and so on. So this is an example of how you would bring up a user interface to interact with the user as part of your macro. So that's a, one of the example macros we have loaded in everybody's sandbox, so you can look at that. Okay, 
and back to my PowerPoint. So that's just a, an example of how you might get started writing um, VBA code to, to work with macros. And the last thing before we finish, some sample use cases that we might have worked on for people uh, that required writing code. Um, and if we've time at the end before we finish, I can actually show some of these, but I do want to leave time for some questions. So, uh, for example, um, we've had a, a scenario where we wanted to combine content from a multi-volume shred. So, uh, we've had a shred that contained, uh, say, section L and section M in multiple volumes. They have multiple, they've shredded those as multiple documents. Uh, that will create multiple tabs in the compliance matrix output. And we have a macro that will then take the content from both those tabs, bring them into a new tab, and line them up side by side. Uh, again, it's quite difficult to do with a recording, but it's much easier to do when you're writing code to identify exactly what content you want to copy. Uh, another example is um, a macro that we've created that uses a combination of a smart dictionary and VBA code in a macro to apply conditional highlighting to paragraphs that highlights where you're not compliant with certain FAR clauses. And when I say a smart dictionary, what I mean is the dictionary actually codifies the FAR clauses that you're compliant with using categories. And then the macro simply applies conditional highlighting in the output based on what categories uh, are listed or what terms and what categories are listed in the output. So it's pretty cool. And finally, another example that uh, we, we managed to work on was, um, again, it's related to FAR clauses, uh, where um, we were shredding RFPs for FAR clauses using a FAR clause dictionary, and then looking up uh, any FAR clauses that were found in an external master file to pull in extra information. So that extra information might be what specific department is responsible for reviewing that FAR clause. So this extra information was effectively an Excel file that listed every FAR clause and had, had details such as um, departmental um, responsibility for that FAR clause, uh, whether that FAR clause required extra validation or, or uh, extra checks and so on. So this was content that wasn't in the compliance matrix, but we were able to use a macro to pull it in from an, another Excel file and put add it into the um, compliance matrix using macros. So again, it's a, it's a Simple enough task that you would do manually using copy and paste or using search, but automating it makes it really fast and, and really error, uh, much less error prone. Um, to get started, as I said, you can look at some of our examples. Uh, the VT extract content is a good example to get started using a user interface. Um, a good practice when you're writing code to create these macros is to make sure the compliance matrix you're working with is in the format that you expect. So does it have the correct number of columns? Uh, does it have the right headings? Because you're in code, you can do that quite easily rather than when you're recording it. So you can do things like make sure that nobody has uh, run another macro that wipes half the content or half the columns. So you can do all these checks to make sure that the, the, the compliance matrix is in the format that you need and that you're gonna perform the right set of actions. Finally, uh, our customer success team uh, is available at customer success at visiblethread.com. They're happy to discuss any customization needs you have. And as a takeaway in the deck, there's a reference there to the Microsoft VBA, which again is the language that is used to actual write macro code. So there's a good reference there on how you can get started using VBA to interact with, with Office tools and, and Office products. Okay, time for more questions. And we've got lots more in. So, uh, do you need to clear macros each time you open and or customize a new doc? No, you do not. No. Okay. So, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. So, you every time you run uh, or customize, you, you don't need to clear. Um, anything you do can just be additive onto the, whatever template you're, you're working with. Okay. And can you run several macros in an output or just one at a time? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, the answer is you can run several, um, but bear in mind that um, if you recall what I was speaking about, um, the last point here, um, bearing in mind what is the additive effect of running a couple of macros, to get, macros together. So if you have a macro that actually deletes a column rather than hides a column, and then you have another macro that is doing something depending on that column being there, you'll run into unexpected errors. 
but there's no problem running any number of macros one after the other as long as a macro isn't going to remove some content that the next macro expects. Unless you okay. code around that. Yeah. Okay. So that gets a little bit more complex at times. Yes. All right. Um, Lisa is asking here, she only sees two macros in their account. Um, where are the other macros that were listed in the demo? I think you had a whole yeah, bunch of Yeah, that's them. a good question. So I have a bunch in my, <laughs> in my sandbox. Um, there, there are macros that I've been playing around with. Uh, the standard two macros that are in everybody's sandbox are the uh, extract content and search for dates. Uh, so they're the two that everybody has. Um, so if I bring up my macros here, uh, it's these two. Um, these ones are macros that I have been playing around with myself. Um, we can make them available for people. So again, if you talk to customer success, uh, they can take you through what these actually do. Uh, and again, if I have time and people want to stay on, I can show what some of these do. Um, but the standard two that every will, will have are, are these two. Okay. Um, when you were walking through the description earlier and you showed how to do, how to add the description um, in the code, um, one of our viewers was saying, I think I saw a description box when we recorded a macro, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And you can utilize that as well. Yes, well spotted. Yes, that ah. is true. Somebody's <laughs> always going to catch me out, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I think we can do uh, one more. Um, if I create a macro, can we use Visible Thread to help us determine what may be incorrect in the macro if it's giving me an error? Okay, so could you repeat the question, Evelyn? <laughs> If I create a macro, can we use Visible Thread to help us determine what may be incorrect yes. in the macro if it's giving me an error? Yes, you can contact our customer success team and we, we will work with you. Okay, well listen, that's great. We've come up to the top of the hour. Um, let me just see if there's um, any more questions. No, I think that's it for now, guys. If there are more questions that, that come through, um, do let us know. Owen, would you pop back into the PowerPoint for me? Of course I will, Evelyn. My apologies. There we go. <laughs> no, no worries. <laughs> um, so everyone, thank you so much for, for joining us. We've got more virtual sessions um, to come and we've had a little change in schedule. Next week on May 6th, we were meant to have how one of our customers uses visible thread as their effective Swiss army knife in proposal management and unfortunately um, our presenter won't be able to make it. The session is postponed and we'll keep you up to date on the new date. However, Denai uh, from our customer success team is going to join us again and she's going to do a session on VT Docs, Acronyms, Doc and Excel Compare. So those are um, areas that I know quite a few of you have asked us to, to go through. So, um, you know, we're really glad that she's going to be able to join us and that's next Wednesday and you can register for that um, right now on our website. Just head over to visiblethread.com, go over into events and you'll see um, all sessions listed. And then we've got two more, one on May, uh, sorry, two more after that on May 21st and then on June 4th. And even after that, we've got even more in the pipeline. So we'll keep going on our virtual sessions and we'll keep you up to date. Now, finally, um, if you have any questions, um, oh, and if you'd go forward um, one, one slide for me, thank you. Um, so if you have any questions, please do, um, you know, check out uh, our, our website. We also um, post all our latest news over on LinkedIn. And as Owen said, contact us if you have questions. There's our support email address. There's the demo address. I should have actually added our customer success here as well. So that's simply customer success at visiblethread.com. Any questions directly for me or Owen, there are our email addresses again. So please feel free to re um, reach out. Finally, I hope you're all keeping well and I hope that's it, it, that's the way it's going to stay. So wishing you and your families and all your teams good health from all of us at Visible Thread. Thank you so much for joining us and thank you, Owen, for a great session today. Really appreciate it. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.